Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to look at how you can create an S-curve from Microsoft Project. So at the moment, you're looking at a screen of earned value columns. So you can see there we've got the BCWS column, planned value, which is budget of cost of work scheduled, ACWP, which is the actual cost of work performed, and then this one the budgeted cost of work performed, basically a cumulative value of the percentage complete of the task. So these are the fields I'm going to use in my S-curve. And what you need to do is have a project that has a baseline because none of this works without saving the baseline. And if I quickly go to the report tab so you can have a look what I'm talking about. So this is the S-curve, creating the S-curve there. And those are the three fields. And if I just click onto those, you can uh, take these off if you don't want them and then they should be removed like so so it's basically whatever you want to have put in there um, so I'm going to recreate all of this from scratch in a new file so if I go back to my base Gantt chart let's just copy these tasks and in fact I'll do it like this I'll copy the whole, the whole thing resources as well copy control C control N new paste them in okay so there's my tasks and uh, let's just get these back to not complete and if I just move this over a bit you can see when you copy um, things like that in project it's already copied the resources and it would have already populated the resource sheet which is quite clever but also something you need to be aware of when you do copy and paste now so there is all our tasks and they've all been fully loaded up. Now this, this is a blank file, so I'm just going to save this as S curve. So you can have it as S curve. Better put that as three because I've already got two. Save that. Now what I need to do is save a baseline. So save a baseline project set baseline, set baseline, just save that baseline. You've got 11 baselines altogether. I'm just going to save that one. Okay. So that's now a project ready to go. And now if I change the table, so I go view tables and more tables and select the earned value table, cost indicators, apply that. You can see you get these fields like so. And if I go back to the resource sheet, that's there's something I didn't notice, so I need to put some costs in here. So I'll do that right now. So these are all on £10 an hour, and overtime rate is 15 The I can copy these down. So the, um, no, I can't because these are not in the right order, so I'll need to do it again. Then I can copy it down. So paper is material. Microsoft Office is material. And computers is material. Okay. And everything else is work. And now the cost for these. Computer is going to be a fixed cost of 500 and uh, office microsoft office is going to be 100 paper is going to be a pound per pack okay let's go back to the gantt chart let's have a look so that's put some figures in there now i need to reset the baseline because that didn't have they weren't there to start off with so that's the actual cost if i go back to project and just save over that baseline set baseline select it still the same one click ok yes now these this planned figure appears so this figure is if you look at this title it's the cumulative work time phase so basically just today today's value even though that's a uh, a one day task add it as a two three day task i'll just put that back to a three day task if i go back to 
entry and put that back to three days it was on three days and then come back to this table you can see it's just reporting on the work completed so far um, that's why that figure is different to that because if you look at Anne, Anne and Ben 160 computers 500 600 and paper um, one pound so that, that's where that value is coming from just today and these will as you get to these tasks these will populate as well now to create the graph uh, what we need to do is a couple of things we need to I'm just going to get rid of this table and go to the tracking table I'll go down to the tracking Gantt view down here now when I use the tracking table I use it in the tracking view so tables tracking and then I need to because you can't actually see what the baseline start is meant to be I, I always insert if I insert that column baseline start baseline start so I know when it was due to start baseline finish creating your own little tables is quite a good way of getting on top of all these um, that's the wrong column getting on top of all these different um, fields so baseline finish that one and also baseline duration I like to have so I know what the planned duration was baseline duration so there, there's the information so now I can start updating some of these tasks but before I, before I do that I want to create a report so report and I'm just going to create a new report and I could put a, call it S curve okay and move that across so this wants to be a time based report so to do that you've got across the top there different options it's on name put it to time and you get the dates coming across there so down the bottom it's on the project summary option there's all the subtasks if I put that on there it becomes very unreadable so that's not something that I'm going to do project summary and it's on actual work and work so I don't want these fields you can either tick them off or you can find them and like that off so what I want is I don't want baseline I want the cost fields so let's go to costs so these are the fields I want actual cost work performed and budget cost work performed and that one those three and I want these as a line so just click on that chart type um, they're all down as columns actually so I'll have them all as line with markers on now there's nothing in there at the moment because I haven't done anything I'll click OK to that and then just leave that and then just go back to my Gantt chart and start tracking Gantt and start updating some of these tasks. Let's get rid of this timeline because it's slightly annoying. Off. All right, so let's say this is, now this is how I update tasks in this table. Rather than doing the 100% complete, which is, I um, don't want that column, just delete that off, which is a very lazy man's way of doing things. It's more accurate to... Um, to use the duration or even more accurate still using the hours the man hours so this task was planned for three days let's say it took four days that will automatically make this complete and it's put the start date and the finish date in so it's letting project do the scheduling for you and then if I say this one this one was meant to be two days let's say this was um, three days and you can see it's moving off the baseline marker there and the actual cost is being shown in that column there now train let's say that that was meant to be two days let's say that was four days and now this one is a milestone so this one is no time so you can just go 100% like so and now onto the install room 2 it's meant to be three days so let's say it was four days and we'll just do one more let's say this was two days so we've now added some detail into this. We've been tracking our our project's progress. So if you go back to the reports 
and your report should be under custom s curve and then you should see some information coming up now there's no information shown here because the state status date is set as today so it's only shown it as today so we need to go and change the status date which is on the project tab and um, let's go back to the Gantt chart so that becomes active project and status date is um, we need it going forward to say the 8th of January so let's set the status date to that the 8th of January okay so now these figures have populated and then you go back to your report go to custom s curve and there's your graph picking that up so because i'm doing a training example and we're not actually moving forward in time that's why this graph didn't populate so you have to use a status date but if we were using this as a live in a live example a live environment moving forward day on day on day the graph would naturally build up because it would be looking at today's date and you would only need to use the status date if you want to do or show where you where you expect to be in the future so that's how you create an s curve in project and that's all i want to talk about on this little exercise so hopefully that's been of use to you and i'll see you on the next one